Hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of Stay Creative York County. Sarah here. In today's video, I am going to be showing you how to make a peppermint foot soak. And this could be something that you give as a gift to someone else or something you make for yourself. So I'm going to be making the foot soak and also packaging them in two ways. We have one where we have it in this jar with a little label on top and a label on the side. And then I have this, which is a zip bag, plastic zip bag and it has some instructions and a label on it. So, to be able to make your foot soak, you're going to need a couple of ingredients. So, the first main ingredients are going to be salt. This is a salt foot soak. The two salts that you're going to need are sea salt or kosher salt. You could get them in fine, which is what I use in the video, or you could use coarse. The second salt that you need is Epsom salt, and this is usually something you can find in the self-care or bath section of stores. Then you're going to need some baking soda. Those are going to be our dry ingredients that we mix together first. Then we're going to be adding some oil. This could be any oil that you have that's food safe. So in this video, I'm using what I have, which is canola, but you could use olive oil, you could try coconut oil, which is going to be just a little bit thicker, um, grapeseed oil, just anything that you have. The second wet ingredient is going to depend on what you have. I'm going to be using a peppermint extract, which is something you can find in the baking section of stores. But if you have some essential oils, you could add that as well. And then we are going to be adding another dry ingredient, but this is optional. I'm going to be taking some tea leaves from a peppermint tea bag and adding so that as it's soaking in the warm water, there's a little bit more of that peppermint smell. And I think that's it. Now, things that you're going to need to actually create the mix, you will need a mixing bowl and a large spoon. I used a plastic cookware spoon that was a little bigger that ha was thin enough to let me drop the um, foot soak into this container. So you might want something, maybe it is that large spoon or maybe it's a tablespoon or maybe you have a measuring cup that you could use to put into here or maybe you have a funnel, just something where you can get it into the container. And of course, you also want to choose what container you want to use. I, of course, have this glass jar. This is actually a reused jar from some pickled beets that I got from my grandmother. So I cleaned it out, made sure it was nice and clean, and then reused it. Or you could use the plastic bag version or really just think of something that you have around the house that maybe you could use. To make the labels, um, I used some sticker paper for the top, but you could use some regular paper um, with some glue. I also used some markers and pins to decorate the two labels. For the glass jar, I used twine to tie this other label on, which has the instructions and the ingredients written on it. And this is just paper with a hole punched out with a hole punch. For the bag, I just use a marker to create the label, paper for the label itself, and then use a stapler to attach it to the top. And I think that is everything. If I've missed anything, I will put in a slide right here. But I think I did give you all the information that you need about what you need before we get into it. So without further ado, let's get into the video. To begin our mixture, we are going to measure out two cups of kosher or sea salt. I am using a fine sea salt, but you could use fine or coarse. That is up to you. 
Second ingredient we are going to be adding is two cups of Epsom salt. You can get this scented and you could do scented instead of doing the peppermint, but I'm going to go for unscented and add the peppermint extract. Next up for dry ingredients, we have a cup of baking soda. Now that we have these three dry ingredients together, we're going to take our mixing spoon and mix that together. I'm going to use the back of the spoon to get any clumps out of the mixture. Once we have that together, we're going to add our first wet ingredient, which is peppermint extract. I am going to be putting six teaspoons, between six and eight teaspoons of it in. You could use essential oil at this point and use as much as you'd like to get the scent that you want. Now I am putting in three teaspoons of oil and now mixing that together. Again, using the back of the spoon to get any clumps out. This will take a little longer than just when we're mixing the dry ingredients, so take your time. Now that we have that all together, I'm going to add our optional ingredient, which is peppermint tea leaves. I'm going to be putting two bags worth in. Just going to cut the top off and then upturn the bag to put the leaves into the mixture. Once we have that in, I'm going to mix that. Make sure it is evenly dispersed throughout the mixture. And there we have it. Mixture complete. Now at this point you can make sure that it has the scent that you want. And you can add more essential oil or extract if you'd like. I'm going to be showing you how to decorate the glass jar first. I'm going to take the ring from the top and trace a circle on some sticker paper. You could also do it on regular paper and have some glue to put it onto the top. Once I have my circle cut out, I am going to decorate it. This label is just going to say what the mixture is, so it's going to say peppermint foot soak. I'm doing a little design so it looks like a candy peppermint. And then I'm going to take the backing off and stick it to the top. And there we go. And now I'm going to fill my jar. Here is my plastic cooking spoon I was talking about. And I am going to use that to scoop and place the mixture inside the jar. I did make sure that the spoon was thin enough to get into the jar's mouth. I'm going to pat it down on the side to make sure it settles in. And then put the top on to see if I have it filled. And I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to use the ring again and trace another circle on some regular white cardstock paper. This is going to be the tag. After cutting it out, I'm going to use a hole punch to create a hole in the top so that I can put the twine through. And on this, I'm going to put instructions, which will be down below in the description. I'm also going to put the ingredients so that if I'm gifting it to someone, they know what is in it. A few decorations for the top. And it's good to go. I'm going to use some white twine, but you could also use baker's twine or yarn. I'm going to wrap it around the top to measure how much I need and cut that with scissors. I'm going to thread the label through and keep it on the first six inches of the twine. I'm setting up my jar on some coasters while I wrap it around, turning it up to get it fitted under the lid. And then once it's wrapped around, I will tie a knot and cut off the excess. And there we have our glass jar. Now, if you want to use a zipper bag instead, this could be good for a single serving, if you will, of it. 
So I'm measuring out roughly six heaping teaspoons, I mean tablespoons, of the mixture, which is one foot soaks worth. I'm going to close the bag, make sure I get air out, and seal it. I have that white cardstock paper again, and I'm going to put it against the bag. It's about six inches across, so I'm going to use a ruler to mark six inches in from the side. And then I know I want it to come down three inches on the front and back, so I'm going to measure six inches on the other side. So this will roughly be a square. This may differ depending on the size of bag that you use. So I'm measuring out my square, marking the sides, and once the sides are marked, I'm cutting it out and folding it in half. Once I have it folded in half, I'm just going to make sure that that fits onto the bag, and it does. Keep in mind when you are doing your decorations for the label that you will be stapling at the top above the zipper. So just leave some space in your design or words for that. On the other side, I'm going to put again the instructions and the ingredients. Once I am done with the label and decorating and putting my instructions, I am going to put that onto the bag, putting the crease right against the top of the zipper bag, then taking a stapler and stapling above the zipper on the two top corners. And now we have our zipper bag and our glass jar ready to go and make someone's day. And there we have it, friends. We have some peppermint foot soak. I do like that this can be done with peppermint extract, so if you don't have essential oils, you could use the extract instead. And I also like the versatility that you can use any oil that you have as well. So, you can give this as a gift. Reminder, Sunday is Mother's Day. <laughs> so, whether you're going to celebrate a mother in your life, uh, someone who's taking care of you, or if you're going to take care of yourself, maybe this is something you'd be interested in making. Okay, friends, that is the end of the video. I do wish you a wonderful weekend, and I hope that you take some time for some self-care, whether that's a little foot soak, a little hand massage that you give yourself, just five minutes to sit and meditate. Remember to take care of you. Okay, friends, so without further ado, let's say our goodbyes. Remember to stay cool, stay safe.